One kind of gross passing core, at least when you first look at it, is the Dolphins. Uh, but man, they kind of lit it up sneakily towards the, the later stretch of the year. Ryan Fitzpatrick was actually the number four quarterback in fantasy football from week seven on once he took over the gig, which just blows. Every time I say that, I don't know what the fuck am I saying, but it's actually true. Uh, and, and, you know, Devontae Parker was obviously somebody that lit it up during that stretch. You see tons of love out there for Mike Jacecki, and also Preston Williams was pretty impressive before going down. They also had nobody this offseason, so to me, look at volume and, and people that looked like they were going to have a depth chart shakeup. There's nothing going on there. It's all still the same. What do you make of this core? Do you think we see another solid season out of them, or is that just kind of a late season flash in the pan from Fitzmagic himself? Yeah, really weird offseason for the Dolphins. <laughs> I thought they'd add like a high end running back. We come away with Matt mm-hmm. Breida and Jordan Howard. You know, they didn't, you know, kind of bring him back Albert Wilson, Alan Hearns, just to kind of, and none, none of these guys are bad yeah. per se. I don't hate, hate the shakeup, but if there's anything they could have done that was fixed, you know, what was probably easily the league's worst offensive line. They just didn't do a great job with that. So I'm hesitant in treating this Dolphins offense like it's one of these other, you know, teams. Uh, you know, Kansas City or someone that we just want to take. Anyone's going to be on the field because <laughs> it might not be all that good of an offense. It took them that long to be good last season. Even when they were humming, it was more or less just Fitzpatrick throwing jump balls up to Parker and, you know, Mike Jusecki out of the slot. Jusecki had wild splits with and without Preston Williams. So did Devontae mm-hmm. Parker. I mean, Preston yeah. was maybe the best receiver on that team before he got hurt. I mean, he was showing out. I know he's undrafted and all that, but just from the preseason to the first – five, six weeks or uh, however long until he got hurt. The dude was playing really well. So, yeah. I mean, Parker and Jacecki aren't – like I think they're – like Parker's like a mid-range wide receiver 20 right now. Jacecki's kind of going that tight end one borderline. So, you know, I don't – they're both really talented guys. If Tua comes in, steps up, they could be the top two pass game options and definitely clear those values, no problem. But there's just some uncertainty there. I'm not going out of my way for them. Preston's the value because he's going yeah. wide receiver 50 range. And again, it just wouldn't be that shocking with the new quarterback and a new offense if Preston ends up being that guy. I mean, we have these situations every year where, you know, the ADPs get closer and closer leading up to drafts. Last year, it was DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel. By the time the draft started, they were more or less interchangeable. I think that could be what we're seeing here with Parker and Preston. Yeah, it totally could end up that way. And the one thing I do love that could allow that to be, you know, both of them interchangeable, but also both very good. And you mentioned you know, Preston Williams, obviously the value there because of the price, but why Parker might still be able to get it done after so many years of being so useless and such a, oh my fucking God, I can't, I, there's somebody I hate more than anybody. The one year I don't actually take the leap is the year he blows up. Uh, <laughs> but but Chan Gailey's spread attack, I mean, He's, you know, Eric Decker and, and Brandon, um, what the hell is the guy's freaking name? Who am I thinking of? Brandon Marshall. Marshall. Yeah, I mean, they both lit it up, like top 10 wide receivers in that offensive scheme for multiple seasons because of so much passing game volume. That was Ryan Fitzpatrick also at QB, just letting those big bodies go up and do their thing. If he's starting, I almost consider it a, a positive as long as he's lasting. Because once he took over as the starting quarterback, Josh Rosen was kind of getting mixed in and up until week six. After week six, only Michael Thomas had more points than Devontae Parker in fantasy football. I just found that set out as I was coming on the air with you. I was like trying to do the metrics. Pretty wild to think that because Fitzpatrick just, there was some of these catches were just insane. It, every single time it seemed like a jump ball and the guy was just, it, Stephon Gilmore, he was doing it over us. You know, some of the best yep. corners in the league. So I loved that uh, stat to see as long as Fitzpatrick is still thrown to him. I kind of like the fact that he's a top 20 only uh, price after going wide receiver 11 in PPR leagues. And again, the second best wide receiver from week seven on. Uh, and Mike Jacecki too. And, uh, but again, then again, the other point you brought up is huge is Preston Williams was also out for that. So how does that shake everything up? But Mike Jacecki did move into the slot for 76% of his snaps. Um, he averaged 7.4 targets per game and scored five touchdowns over the last seven games. He really started to light it up was the tight end five in that span too. So it's just a matter of how much was that Preston Williams. But the Chan Gailey attack should give us some aerial pie at least to keep feeding him. So I, I, I'm intrigued. I'm sneaky intrigued. I, not the Chiefs like you mentioned, but still an intriguing offense. <laughs> What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.